Um, so here are some examples. If I just click on it, Michael, the play button, it'll play. Yeah, it'll video. pop up. Yep. Okay, so exploiting example. So it's all about just taking advantage of the space that they give us. That was um, on the width, easy pass, it took two passes, it was on the time. Um, this is a quick advancing. Sorry. Did it pop up? No. Double click me and then say shit pop up. Exit out really quick. Sorry. Exit? Immediately won the ball back, went forward with it. Okay, this one's trapping. Oh god. Um, and the big thing with this is like, obviously it looks different. Um, in a lot of different moments and times in the game, but how you do them is relatively the same um, terms that we use to coach them. Their actions are the same. It might just like look different in different spaces. Oh, all the video. So this is all the phases, and then it's the hows of them. And this is kind of like what Michael's talking about. How the next coaching man, we're going to talk a lot more about the principles and how to do all of those things, but hopefully um, like you have an idea when you look at these, you know, you know what phase of play you're in, you're exploiting for that day, um, or trapping, then these are kind of like what you're going over. These are your stopping points that you're coaching them to do. Um, is that as into it as we want? Yeah. I mean, I'd ask a second question. Any questions on those? Does that exist somewhere? Do we have access? Yes. yes. It's in the coaching book and the drive, but also in the video. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Let's do Okay. Click next. Okay. So, session layout. So, what I would like to do is walk through this step by step. That's why I've given you a session plan so that we can kind of do this together and answer questions, but also so that you understand what it looks like and how it's to be done. So starting with the top one, training one, type of session, introduction. So there's, for you guys, there's four types. Intro, overload, repeat, mastery. Explain to me, Jose, what an intro session is, because you did a great job at it last night. <laughs> Uh, well, an intro session is uh, an opportunity that we have as a coaches to introduce a topic uh, in a way that it will be successful to the team that we're teaching by either taking pressure, lowering numbers in the opposition, etc. So, so that our point comes across a lot easier, whatever we're trying to teach. Perfect. Any questions on the intro session? Awesome. Spencer, how about overload session? Overload, I believe that's what you're doing. Lots of repetitions. You're doing uh, the same thing again and again and again and again. With minimal pressure. 
minimal, but more than more than the interview. intro. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Repeat session would be doing the same session again. So basically, your objective is to do intro, overload, repeat, a potential overload, mastery. Or, okay, they've got it down, I don't need to do a repeat, I can do another overload and a mastery. That's just kind of the classification. Questions, what would be, Hondo, what would be a mastery session to you? In, in general, not specifically, <clears throat> but summarize what mastery would mean. Seeing you in a game-like situation. Okay, perfect. Lots of coaching or little coaching? Little coaching. Perfect. Little coaching is basically stepping back and saying, okay, have these guys mastered what I've taught, or do I need to step in and repeat the session again? Questions on that? Okay. Next would be step number one. What's up, Eric? Sorry. You're good. No worries. What do we think step number one means? What does step number one? So just going down, do I need to make this bigger? I can make it bigger. Or if you point to, uh, to, to what? Uh, right here. Okay. So this right here. That's your introduction, I guess. Part of your introduction, kind of setting out, setting out the expectation of what you want. Right? Okay, so it's the first time I introduce this. So it just ties in again to intro. So then overload number two would be the second time I've done this, if that makes sense. Repeat would be this number two. It wouldn't be number three, it'd be number two because it's just hopefully from a numer numerical standpoint, tying it all in. Moment, Brad, what does moment mean? One of the four moments of the game. Perfect, what are the four moments? Backing, defending, and then transitioning where you want to be. Perfect. I think we all got that. Yeah. Plus, sometimes people throw set pieces. Set pieces could be a fifth one. Yep. Okay. Phase. A lot of questions on this one. What is a phase of play? Is that kind of like the sub moment? Correct. So these are what we consider our phases. So you have moment, and Spencer put it sub moment, but we call them phases. So these are the phases of play for U9, for U8 to U12. And they, we build off of that for 11 to 11, you just add in another defending and another attacking um, phase. Question on phases. Okay, on the ball, off the ball. Peter, what does on the ball mean to you? Agree up top. I would say uh, player with the ball is on the ball. Okay. All the other players that don't have the ball are off the ball. Okay. So now let's go advance the space. What's that mean to you? On the ball. On the ball. Uh, looking for a pass into uh, space, probably. Maybe. Any other thoughts, guys? Because yeah, 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 you have the ball, right? Penetration dribble. Is it just uh, literally what it means? On the ball, you have the ball, so you, if there is a space in front of you to take, you take it. Like you dribble. Okay, so basically what Peter and Jose said, right. the objective for us is before we can get to goal, the ball usually starts here. So it's us advancing to space, or preferably space to the goal. So that's what we're trying to teach is how, like, I'm coaching my daughters 5v5 or U5, U6, whatever team right now. None of them can dribble straight to goal without any pressure. They have no pressure and they can't go straight to goal. And I've seen this with U9s. Christine, you've got, like, if you had no pressure and you put them right here, out of 10, how many times do you think they dribble into the goal? On purpose. On purpose. Very <laughs> little. Great. I would say lower than 50%. Yes, Agree? Thoughts? Okay, so for us, it's about teaching them to get to space without pressure. And then off the ball, the defender is where? That would be the next one down. So 
behind. So basically, we're teaching them, okay, you're here, the bender starts here. Does it always have to be the defender shooting off the ball to be the other player on the field? On this, it's always the defender. Yeah, good question. Very good question. Simplify things, yes or no? Or answer questions on that? Like, or give me a face, talk to me. Can you go back to the, the off the ball? I, mean, I, don't, I don't get what you're saying. Maybe I'm just not. So, on the defense, let's say I'm making a drill. Like, my objective is to help this player get to space. Well, if I put a defender there, that's very oh, complicated. Gotcha. Okay, so the defender would be, the, the other ones are in front, to the side, or okay. behind. Okay. So step one is behind, two would be next to, three would be in front. Just from behind. Because it's an yeah. introduction. Yeah. That's why. Bingo. Yep. Questions on that? We understand. Okay. Motor skills. This was another question. Coordination, speed. There's one more. What's the other one? Strength. Okay. I talked to you about those. What do those mean to you? Plyometrics. It's understanding your body better. Okay. So str strength is. Uh, body strength. Plyo work. Body strength, or body weight work. Okay, speed, talk to me. Uh, being able to burst, uh, being able to learn how to run properly. Okay, sprints, agility, agility. I'm gonna put yours over here. Uh, what did you say? Um, technique, proper technique. What else? Um, the speed or? It, any of the three. Anything additional? Uh, yeah, not just sprints, but also understanding how to maybe run distance or, or longer sessions. Training your body at different uh, coordination. It's like changing direction. So the speed, you could be going, so sprint, you can go maybe in the forward direction. Speed could also be in a lateral or a backward direction as well. Okay. Post -up. Explosiveness, so it changes the direction. Okay, so warm up. What would be a motor skill game, Christine, since we talked about it? Involving strength. What could you do? So I came up with a different one. Than the Perfect. Go for it. Because I've done this with my girls before, but a little different. So if you have like speed ladders, you can put two just in a line, and then group A, group B, and two. The first two people are hopping on two feet to meet each other. They do rock paper scissors. Winner continues to go. Loser goes to the back of the line. Next person in line goes. So they have to hop on both feet. And then I would say they could stop on one foot while they're doing their rock, paper, scissors. Balance, and if they, yeah, if they change. fall immediately back to the line, they like go that. until one team reaches the other Wins. side. Mm -hmm. Low cognitive and coordination and strength. Okay, good. Anybody else? Come up with a game really quick. So anyone where you said comes up like a figure eight? Okay. And they we chase each other. Uh, like they, that. Have, they have a penny tattoo in the back. One goes, the other one chases. They have to change directions to get around to go to the figure eight. Perfect. So, figure eights. How can we make that a speed exercise? And how can we make that a strength exercise? Uh, how, how are you doing it? For me, the first one would be speed because there's no. Yeah. Restrictions, it's just a chase the other person. Okay, now how can we make it strength? I think that's a great game. Bunny, bunny hop, hop, two feet. They can only hop on two feet to chase or hop on one foot. Yeah. Just mixing it up to make it more strength based instead of speed based. So, our first part of our session, when they show up, should be warm up with one of those games. Questions, thoughts 
understand? Yes, no? Input? We just like missionary terms. Yes. Throw some restrictions in there. Yes, 100%. Play sharks and minnows, you could play capture the ball, you could play tag, you could play, uh, what's another one? I mean, there's so many elementary school games that you could do. Like, I do this with a lot of my older teams, but I make it a little more competitive, if that makes sense. <laughs> but um, just to get them going sometimes. Mix it up instead of being so professional and methodic. I mean, you watch pros do this type of stuff now. But. Yes, Peter? Play practice play. Not ours. Okay. Throw it out for no. I know you just took it. That's US soccer. Okay. It's different. Okay. Not that it's bad, but we have pieces of it, but we do not use quick practice play. Did you record that? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, activity two and three. Lots of questions on this. Okay. So let's talk. What was the first question, Spencer, Lex, Christine, that you guys have for me? So, we do all six of these? Yes. <laughs> we have to do all six. Okay. Thoughts on that? How did you guys work it into your activity? Let me ask that. Or I mean, did I, you? So, when we were doing it, so me and Arturo took this section, and Arturo was thinking he wanted to do six different activities and focusing on just one thing. And I'm like, ah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> okay, so uh, question number one. Do not do six different activities. Yes. Okay, go on. And so what I was thinking is like, I was thinking two activities, and I could combine easily three or four of them in one, and the other three or four in another activity. And then you split it up, so in 15 minutes you're doing two different drills that are maybe similar but our work and you can incorporate all six of those in two drills. Perfect, I like that. Thoughts, Lex, Christine? So I actually, if, if my assistant is there, I split it up where you could do it. So I had three different sections where you could do uh, two exercises in each one and rotate. So you could still get 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off in that 12 minutes, but you have to have an assistant coach that's because you know, then you're only watching yeah, half the kids. Yeah. And really only a quarter because they're half on, half off. So half you on. did, what would we call that? Um, uh, I don't know. It, it is more like a tr traditional circuit, but I only have three stations. So stations. Like What's called the stations? There we go. So you did two stations? Uh, I did three stations, but only two were active at a time. Okay. Christine, what did you guys come up with? I didn't incorporate the lazy rubber standing throw-ins with mine, but um, similar to what was said, I just did one activity that incorporated a couple of the movements at one time for a couple sets and then switched the movement throughout. Any other thoughts on this? Um, I do this like for my warm up sometimes on the game for the kick. You can get a used to or like with all the charts that they need on the game, you get ready, you know, like I probably would spend like 10 or 15 minutes on that. Put it down on a circle, half the players inside, half the players outside, and then just just do that, like all the tech technical, you know, you want to do it. We do it with them. I think it's called uh, Roxbury. That's yeah, right. Okay. Well, I've been doing what I've called the people area. The so what? Say that again. <laughs> it's like an aquarium for people. Okay. So I just build a box and then I assign those things through. Actually, I build a series of four boxes and they graduate from one box <coughs> to the next. So rather than setting out cones and saying dribble through these, they got to dribble around each other. I like that. To make it kind of packed, and so having to anticipate the way your teammates are moving feels more game like um, than just having six cones laid out to dribble through. And then you just assign the skill, this is what it is. And then one thing that I found just recently actually is if you encourage them and talk about like an aquarium, be the shark in the aquarium, be you know, crisp in your movements, be fast, be the one that like stands out. And then when they feel like, yeah, I've got this, is easy, coach, then go stand in the middle with them and say, okay, now use that thing to beat me. And then oh, they'll, they'll dribble around, but they'll be quick to line up to be the next ones. It's all fun. Okay. 
I like that. Just another example. Can we see that okay? Eddie Johnson's fantastic at this. Bobby has been there once, twice, once. once. But just a different way, like he does. I mean, Brick, he's got 40 kids there probably. And he sets up all the different movements. Oh, summer, more than 100. Yeah. <laughs> High repetition. Not a lot of pressure. The pressure is themselves in the cones. And then the sessions are four hours as well. Okay. So just showing you an example, I think all three, all four. All four that were brought up are fantastic. Love it. Okay, so the biggest thing is just trying to implement all of those technical aspects into your session or those activities. Yeah. Questions on how you can implement them or what they mean. I know somebody asked about inside center center. So ball striking, the first one is inside the foot. center of the ball. So strike the middle. And then there's a couple different ways. Like if you want to bend it, you would strike here. But for the first one, we're striking center to center. So just explaining that to a player. Inside the foot, center of the ball, strike through the center. Does that make sense? Yes, clear, no? Okay, the next one will be inside, center, and side, or side. As you would push and then put your foot out to give it a little bit of spin as they start to get older. Questions on that? Does that help answer that? Are they going to give me a smirk? No, 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 no. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this Eddie Johnson with that stuff. Um, body paint. We all know what a body paint is. Don't touch the ball, fake left, go right. Don't touch the ball, fake right, go left. So after they come back, so after you fake left, bring it with the inside of your foot to the right. That would be the move. Um, receiving and turning would be the sole of the foot. Roll, push, let's see what we have there, pull. Lace is pretty simple. And then standing throw-ins, because all of our kids are terrible at throw-ins. Yeah. So maybe start it out with, they throw the ball into the player as you receive it with the bottom of their foot, and then they start the activity, just to give different ideas. Questions on that? I don't have a question. Statement, concern. Never, never, yeah, my concern with this with, and my girls would be like the top, like U, U12. Yeah. It seems like a lot to like push through in 30 seconds, should they have more exposure to this and spread out in different sessions or can you really get through six to so you're gonna, minutes? Great question. So what I would say is 30 seconds is them working through that circuit or in that partner and work. Attention, capacity, or Well, I'm gonna like, so let's say Eddie Johnson has the four full moon. Okay, so from here, throw in, that starts your three. And it doesn't have to be timed perfectly, it's more just that's the work rate. So she goes through, footwork, 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 ball strike. By the time that's done, it should be 30 seconds. If that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So then hopefully by the end of it, they'll have had at least 12 reps inside that 30 seconds. Okay. Does that answer your question? Or you still it wasn't a question, it was more like, it's, it's, it's just, I, I think it's, and maybe this is not where you're going, but it's sometimes it's hard to gauge the, mm -hmm. the, the, the young players, whether or not they can do certain things. And, and, you, and you adjust, right? You adjust your session towards that, but trying to get all of this done in that amount of time with the capacity that the players may or may not be able to do, like it, it's, it may not be feasible, right? To, to get all those reps in. Is that, is that what you're Yeah, yeah, I, more, yeah, not really a question, more like, Man, that's a lot. Like you gotta be on it. You gotta be like Those start for, stop for me. Okay. Yeah. So Jasper, this is this is what I'm thinking. Because I was I've been watching this. Well, and you did it all spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but but uh, just going along with what they're saying. So 
you look at this Eddie Johnson, these kids, they've been doing it for a while, right? And, and uh, you picked up those kids and it's easier to run this session with them. But with the kids that we have, uh, so dribbling, sole of the foot, it used to do the, you know, the, the sole of the foot and stuff. Um, I feel like I can probably spend a whole session and they still will not get it, right? Uh, at the end. So do I want to move to another topic if they have not even mastered okay. Yes, that? I get what you guys are saying. Yeah. So as we move into activity four, they are required to dribble out there. So they went from, first time they tried it was here, mm -hmm. didn't really like just falling over or whatever. So now activity four, they still have to dribble with the sole of their foot the whole time. And so now it's game-like inside a situation. Does that make sense? So they yeah. had a game-like repetition. And then you would end up doing this, is it three or six? I think it's six different times yeah. before you would move on. So hopefully from this time to time six is drastically different. So I would expect this to be really messy, like honest, and I would want it to be really messy, the first probably one to three times you do it. And then by four, five, six, so again, this is intro. Okay, we overload a little bit. Okay, we repeat that, overload them again. Now we're starting to get mastery. Does that answer your question a little bit better, Alex? Mm -hmm. Or you provide feedback yeah, to yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Is that? Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Questions on that or other statements? Because I think that's a great statement. I, I have a good question. Yeah. Um, as natural, it, it will be kids that they're better than other kids, right? So in that case, you have like 13 kids out of the 13, seven did great. Do, do we do again, repeat with the other kids that didn't do it? Make them do it faster. Because <coughs> right, ultimately, sorry. It always happened. <coughs> <coughs> so what Michael is probably saying, like the kids that have mastered, they can do it faster, yeah. and the others can just repeat. <coughs> yes. Like, okay. Ultimately, a new nine is not gonna be at the top level of rolling the ball. Right. And, and hopefully our teams are, you know, or eight teams, they're all about the same level. The yes. B teams are all about the same level and so forth. Correct. Okay, great, great stuff on that, guys. So now as we move into activity four, small side of game. Didn't get, I got some questions on this, but ask away. Nothing. What did we do? Give me... Brad, what did you guys do for activity four? Four box bugs bunny. Okay, explain that to me. <laughs> so those four boxes that I built for my people area, they're actually a joy, so they're all they're all shared um, shared that. Yes. Four yeah, boards. they're shared orders. So the box just so, so split into four. So one box is divided. I, I gotta check it. Check it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll pay these things. Four by four, sorry. Divided into four oh. teams. Um, four teams of what? Well, how many do you have? How make many it, are Make it ideal. So, four be, it be, let's go three, three in each team. In each box? Oh, three players in each box, so four teams of three. All green or half green, half black? Four different teams, so I've got, okay, I got to check. All different colors. Okay. Um, so then, uh, each team, you, you own that box, that's your box, you want the ball in your box. <coughs> if the ball is in a neighboring box, you can send one player in to, and there's one ball? One ball. You send one player in to go and retrieve the ball, win it from them, so you got, so you're gonna have two players in, because you can only go from the corner, where X is where you go to try and Just the neighboring box? Just the neighboring box. Try and win it back. And play it in your box and then maintain position in your box. Okay. So kind of capture the ball. Okay, so going off of a small scale game, complexity. Expand on that, Jose, because we've talked about this a lot. Oh my god. 1D space. What does that mean? 
You got me there. I thought one and this space. I, I don't recall that, Michael. Say it again, Dustin. No defender or very, very light pressure behind you? No oh. defender. So we talked about at the beginning, a player cannot dribble without pressure. So go. Okay, so in this activity, the very first time would be one verse space. Space. Okay, defender's position is so we got to start back here, behind the attacker. How do they have to dribble? We just worked on it for 15 minutes. So they have to use the sole of their foot to roll the ball. Cannot use inside, cannot use outside, cannot use toe. It's all sole of the foot. Apply a skill if you want to. Okay, so between here and there, they have to do a faint wall going to wall. And then if you add a goal in, when they strike it, it has to be inside center center. So ultimately the next time, let's say the defender is next to them, it would be the same thing, try to get to space. And then the third one would be defender in front of them. That would be how to apply what's in there to the small size activity. Comments, concerns, thoughts, questions, not to disregard Brad's game, but that's how you would apply that in there. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but when I see small side, when I read small side, I, I think of group of players playing. Does that make sense? Okay. Maybe because you know, well, that comes from, from the that. UYSA, that's, yeah. that's how so they how, use the train. How yeah. would you make this, because small side it is 1v1, yeah. how would you make this high repetition without a lot of space? There's actually a quarter of games in all languages. And I would just do two groups. Because <clears throat> how many kids do you have on your team when you go? 12? Yeah. So there's six. And I would just make it like flank changes from the game as well. Yeah. Now ultimately as they get older, they'll get 2v2, 2v1 with, because we did this, me and Bailey did this all last winter. Or was it two winter? Yeah. I think it was last winter, right? 2v1. Well, the futsal games with the... Oh, yeah. Last winter? That's not true. So, Michael, since we are, you know, the dribbling, we are teaching uh, sole of the foot, uh, in this exercise, do they, we're expecting them yes. to roll it. So what I would do is say, okay. You which cannot, which is an, an unnatural thing correct, to do, right? 100%. So if you just ask them to go from that and said, okay, play, what are they going to do? They're going to. Whatever's easiest. Yeah. Force them to have to use the sole of their foot or let's say it's outside. Okay, you have to use the outside. The next thing I would do is the first time I'd say, okay, go right foot, game, left foot. Now you can use both feet. Not like forcing them to use left, forcing them to use right. Otherwise, like I laugh at how much we spend, okay, do a step over, do a step over, do a step over, and then you go to a game and you ask them to do it in a game and how many of them will do it? Right. 10%. So okay, now we ask them to roll the ball and you have to do a body paint as well with it. So we're forcing them inside of a game environment to do it. Does that answer the question on the small sided activity or the session they have? Okay, activity five, this is where they get to play. So complexity, start out 77. If you're a 99 team, you start out 99. That's the only change. FIFA and street rules. What do you think the difference is? Dustin talked about it because you were there. Uh, FIFA, <laughs> FIFA, you just follow all the rules. Street rules, you let the players kind of dictate themselves. Uh, make it a lot more scrappy. Fight for the ball. You know, you know, you kick it out of bounds. Say, heck no, that's my ball. Grab it first, and 
let them let them figure it out on their own. Okay, perfect. So FIFA, normal soccer game, offsides, throw-ins, corner kicks, all that stuff. Ball goes out, it's the other team's ball. Street rules makes our kids a little more competitive. Like, okay, I kick the ball out, and it's near me. I'm gonna freaking go grab it and play. Like teaching them to have that because our younger kids don't naturally have that. So teaching them a little bit. You know more. what? That's that's actually something good that I'm learning today because I've been thinking about how can I teach. So because some kids, they are just like soft, like like you know like David was like it's like oh they're like oh it's out. Eric, and Eric, then, you and there's wind, we we'll just grab it and keep <laughs> going, right? So, but that's good because that will allow those kids to go outside of that. Yeah. On this big box that they have, and just go straight. So when we're in Northwest <laughs> Conference League, we're playing Impact, and uh, balls uh, down the line, uh, the the AR didn't get there quick enough. Ball was a solid yard over the goal line. Evan whipped it anyways. Joaquin came in, scored the goal, yeah. and they and they, they they gave it. And he felt bad. I was like, dude, it's not on you to do with the AR. Like that's her job, right? So. I mean, feel how you want to feel about it, but I'm a massive fan of creating that competitive, competitive through street goals all the time. Like, just all take it and go. Because that's what I want them to do in a game. I, I think it's a good example. I think the easiest one for me is, okay, I kicked it out of bounds, I picked the ball up, and I give it to you to throw it over my head. Like, yes. For me, it's just teaching them that, like, yeah. gamesmanship and that type of stuff. So, as we move on. So in this is where you would start to implement your tactics. So the disorganized phase is basically the build out phase. So, hey, I wanna start working on my build out. Am I gonna build with two? Am I gonna build with three? What are we looking to do? The defending, or sorry, the group that I'm working with is in the defending half and it's my goalkeeper and my defenders, or my goalkeeper, defender, midfielders. Right. And then starting situation, goalkeeper has the ball. Maybe next time it's a throw, or maybe next time it's a free kick, or it's a live play, and you've got to figure out how to do it. But the simplest one would be the goalkeeper starts with the ball, and then the opponent line of confrontation is build out line. Most time, 99, 77, they start at the box or the build out line, it's rush, go. So I would start out really simple with one defender. And then to overload it, you would go to two. And then repeat, do two again, and then probably go to three. And then that's what you would work on your tactics, your team, inside of that session. That's where you'd stop, coach, do all that fun stuff. Questions on that portion? So yes. on, on the other one, I think we have like a midfield half. Yep. Are you, are you doing like halves? Are you doing thirds? Are you doing It's up to you. I, honestly, I don't split the field up except for halves almost for me. It's like if I'm trying to build in, I don't start in the defensive third, I'm actually trying to get into the midfield third, if that makes sense, or even the attacking third sometimes. So for me, it's more, that's your ending spot, would be like, or your starting spot, it would depend. But to me, that's more just a progression. Like, okay, if we're working on finishing, we're probably gonna start in the midfield half and midfield third, but I don't have a set like it's got to be this third or that third, and you got to get here and get there. Like it's more what you feel is good for your team. Because you may be working on a super high press, and we want to get into the attacking half, like working on your goalkeeper with a nice little clip. I'm totally good with that. More clear on building your session for these younger age groups. Comments, concerns, questions, a lot of info. You have a 65 minute training session here, where do you get 65 from? It's just more of the timing of what? Uh, you get the hour and a half. I think everyone here will take an hour and a half spot. So I, part of it is you're gonna have water breaks, you're gonna have coaching points, like this is more play time. So like in this four minute game, you're probably gonna stop and coach for a little bit. So now it becomes six instead of four, and so on. Just find a seat, no worries bro, you're good. We haven't started yet, this is all. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yes, so game implementation, in, in my head, I wanted long time to be something to flow. So it's not this four minutes on, two minutes yep. off. Do we, do we implement that later? Because I usually scrimmage for the last 20 minutes fairly uninterrupted. So this right here is to help them stay at the highest possible level. If you go longer than that, higher speed, higher quality for a shorter period of time, stop, talk, and high quality, that's the reason behind it. Now to say, okay, I feel like my team, we've got 2012s, I could probably use six minutes, you probably could. Like that's just more of a guideline because we've got some people doing, and I don't know, but I've seen people do 12, and after six minutes, they're like, and coach is like, what are we doing, guys? We're gonna work. And it's like, well, they physically can't after a full training session. If that makes sense. But more, again, guideline to help for the coach. Like, okay, my team can go a little more, they need a little less. We totally get that. Other comments? Does this uh, kind of fit? We need to talk about doing uh, scrimmages between two different teams at the very end. Perfect. 77, right there. Or 99, because you're a 99 team. So again, just make sure it's 99. And then the second, the second week, you would go to 77 instead of 5v5. And then you would go to 5v5 or 99 team. Does that make sense? So first week, your scrimmage at the end would be sevens, or nines, sorry. Minus two. And then five. For the 99, or 77, it's seven, five, and three. Do you want to explain why it goes down? Take a guess, Christine, fitness lady. <laughs> Too much overload? Sorry. Too much overload for what? Like, to go week by week if they're continuing to stretch. Okay. Yeah, somewhat. What's easier, 77 or 3v3? Awesome. Physical load. You say 77. Why? Less movements. Perfect. Less, less, less interactions. So you start out the highest, least interactions, and work your way down. Yeah. So last year we had it 77. Let's say on Tuesday and Thursday would be like a 5v5. Back to 7v7, 3v3. What, what did switch? Talking to Raymond for hygiene. Just suggested this. It was better for the kids. Now, the older kids, that's different. But the younger kids, this is what he suggested based on his research. Okay, let's go over questions really quick and then we'll move on to Coach Gap. Activity two and three, timing of them, how do we combine different activities? Did we answer that question for you guys? If I, did, if I didn't raise your hand, how about that? Okay, activity four, set up a small side of games, 1v1 or what? I think we answered that. Okay, how do we apply objectives at the bottom of the final game? That was the last thing we just kind of went over. Uh, what does the following mean? We went over that. Example of the motor skill game, we went over that. Explain the boxes, we did that the whole time. How does the session progress? So warm up, technical work, small side of game, end game. And then you said how we implement, does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Thank you, pretty happy, appreciate you guys. All right, on to the next one. Explore square.